Hi there, and welcome back to another episode of How To with Harman, the place to get your project management tips to put you one step ahead of the rest. Right, okay, so today we will look at how to write a scope document for a small to a medium sized project. Now, first off, I want to say that there are a lot of scope templates out there. You can just go and have a look on Google. And maybe you are already using one um, in your project that are in use in your organization. So what I will look at today is the basic content that you need to put inside your scope document in order to establish the boundaries around your project. So let's dive in. Okay, so here is a template of a project scope, a very simple project scope. So first thing that we need to look at is the project objective. So what is the overall outcome or the objective that you want to attain with your project? So in this case, um, as you can see here, I said to obtain land and establish a community vegetable garden in Mamalori starting from the 10th of January to the 30th, 30th of April at a cost not exceeding 50,000 rand. So normally um, our overall objective looks at four things. It must contain four things. So first of all, uh, what needs to be done? So obtain land and establish a vegetable garden. Where must it be done? So in this case in Mamalori. And uh, when must it be done? So that's your project timeline, 10th of Jan till 30th of April. And then how much is it going to cost? And mine is uh, not exceeding 50,000 Rand. So you must make sure that you have those four elements in at least those four elements in your project uh, objective. Right, so now we move on to the project deliverables. So the project deliverables are basically the elements that must be delivered by the project to make sure that the project objective or the main outcome is, is materialized or attained at the end of the day. Um, so the deliverables for this project uh, basically lease, hire or buy the land, utilize the local labor, prepare the land for planting with a watering system and a fence and procure vegetable plants. So how did I come up with these deliverables? I looked at my main project objective and out of that, I broke the project up into manageable pieces or manageable deliverables. And here you can see this is about the land, the labor, preparing of the land and procuring of the vegetable plants. So those are my main deliverables, which you will later on plan into much more detail. Then we start looking at the milestones. Okay, so a milestone is a quality checkpoint along the way where you need to check that your deliverables have been done and achieved by a certain date. So milestones are always linked to a date. Right, so the milestones here, where I get them from is from my deliverables. I look at my deliverables and out of that, I start writing down certain milestones or quality checkpoints along the way. So there you can see land negotiations, agreements, recruitment of the labor, preparation of the land must be completed and planting completed. And all of them have certain dates that are attached to them. So by that specific date, it must be done. Right, so let's look at the, um, the exclusions. We include exclusions in the project scope because that explicitly explicitly tells us what we are not going to do in the project. So in this case, we are not uh, we are only going to um, produce vegetables, so not any fruit or trees or whatever the case might be. And the selling of the produce we are not going to do. So in other words, it's a community vegetable garden. We are going to produce vegetables and then supply that to the community. Um, the reason also for exclusions is that your stakeholders or the people involved in the project don't expect to find something there uh, that is not going to be done by the project. So here we list them and we say only vegetables, no selling. And then they know not to um, expect it. The next one that I want to talk about is constraints. Now constraints are um, something that is in your way or it, it's, it's something difficult that you must overcome. Now, <clears throat> we list the constraints uh, in the beginning of the project that we know 
what are the obstacles that we are going to face along the way. So the first one there, I said timeline for the project is limited. So you need to do everything within the timeline that you have. You only have a limited amount of time. And in, in the case of this project, it's about four months. To acquire knowledgeable and skilled local, la local labor. So we don't know yet if there is local labor in the uh, vicinity that is skilled that can help us. So that's something that we need to check out, but it's a constraint at this specific stage because we don't have that. Pest destroying the vegetables. So yes, once you set up the garden, the pests will come and destroy some of the vegetables. So that's going to be a constraint and it's going to cost you time and money. So you need to have a plan in place to um, mitigate that constraint. And then a budget of 50,000 rand. So you only have 50,000 for this project, not more. So that is uh, quite a constraint and everything must be done according to the budget that you have. Then lastly, assumptions. Now an assumption is something that you assume to be true without having uh, proof that it is. The reason why we put assumptions in is that we don't have all the information yet about the project but we must go on and plan the project so we make certain assumptions so that we can base our planning on that assumption as you go on with the project you will see if your assumptions are true or false if they are true cool no problem then they are facts but if they are false then obviously you will need to change the project plan and get more information so in this case we said no resistance from the community so we didn't pick up any resistance while we started to do research for the project and uh, the schedule and cost will be sufficient to complete the project so those are the assumptions that we make um, at this stage for the project Okay, so there you have it now. That is the scope document very shortly. So as I've mentioned in the beginning, if you need to add extra to your scope document, then things like health and safety, for example, then you just add it to the scope document and then um, that then forms part and parcel of uh, the scope document. So the whole idea is with the scope document is to put a boundary around your project that you know and everyone knows in terms of the stakeholders what will be done inside the project and what are we not going to do, what is not part of the project. So I hope this will give you a very good idea of how to put a scope document together. Um, it's a very simple template but a very effective one uh, which you can uh, implement in your project. So good luck with writing your scope documents and I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.